welcome to Daniel Douglas TV. I'm in Haarlem and I'm on my way to the Tyler's Museum. I'm gonna have a look at an exhibition from Jan Weissenburg. Jan Weissenburg was a painter in the 19th century. He's called a romantic painter because he liked to paint old buildings, 17th century buildings. Buildings that were demolished at that time because there was a lot of industry coming up. He's called the Johannes Vermeer of the 19th century. He painted very detailed and very realistic. This exhibition is in the Tyler's Museum. The museum is called after Peter Tyler's van der Hulst. He had a silk factory and he made sheets and he was a banker. And he was part of the enlightened ones from that time. He had a huge fascination for art and science. Tyler's was a very rich man. He was an art collector and also a collector of scientific objects, inventions, but also fossils. And he made a museum out of all of this. Where the 17th century painters like Rembrandt started to tell a story with light, Weissenburg continued this tradition. You can see it very well in this painting. It's the Binnenplaats by the Stadthuis van Culemborg. Weissenburg was known for not painting exactly the reality as it was. This was, for instance, the same porch, and you can see how he changed the decoration on it. That way you can say he was more inspired by certain buildings that he wanted to paint than to copy them exactly. Here you can see sketches of the place and probably he did these two just on the spot from life for an inspiration and a pre-study for the painting itself. And as the sun moved the casted shadow from the building in the right will move as well. So Weissnerburg choose to have this man being lightened up. He choose to have all these four figures lightened up so he can very clearly see what's going on. The woman in the left is cleaning copper perhaps. The woman in the middle, she's pumping water. And the guy, what's he doing? He could be looking at the girl. Or is he looking at the dog? Ra ba ba sha ba 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 
Uh, Betty, what did you do? You knocked over the bucket with the water. I did not do that. Trump did. Who is the Trump? It's my dog. Woo woo. Rabba shop. Rabba shop. Rabba shop. What I love so much about this museum is the diversity of it. You've got a lot of art, mostly 19th century art. But there are also these beautiful things from nature like fossils, stones. Lapis lazuli. Skulls. And then all the scientific inventions. Are you angry at me? No. So what's my conclusion about Jan Weishnebuch after seeing this exhibition? There's one thing I always found remarkable about the last 350 years of art history. And that's that in the 17th century, around 1650, there was a blooming art market. The art world was at its peak. And then, the 18th century, there was almost no art at all. There were hardly any artists to find by then. And then in the 19th century, suddenly, very brilliant artists start to work again. In the very similar tradition, it probably had to do with the financial crisis in Holland. But it might even have been simply out of fashion at that time. Jan Weisnerpoel is a very good example of one of the big upcoming artists. And he was inspired by the 17th century painters. The painters of a time when everything was so well, a peak we had that never come back just the way it used to be. And maybe you can say, since a few decades, a third wave of this tradition is to be seen. A lot of people started to paint ordinary, simple things again and made them special. Yeah.